Hello and welcome. My name is Rev Bowen from Simply Waldorf. In this video, I will demonstrate how to deliver a math lesson for an early grade. I have derived this lesson out of the story that was presented in the demonstration story lesson. Um, I hope you can see the connection between how we tell the story on day one and how we work with the math lesson on day two. I have also provided some additional resources in the description below that will help you prepare and deliver a math lesson such as this to your students. And I hope you will check out the free story video so that you see the story that this lesson comes from. Welcome to second grade math. This is lesson one, and I'm just going to give a brief introduction. I'm going to present 36 math lessons that could be used in the math blocks or throughout all the weeks of a school year, however you want to arrange it. You'll see an example block rotation that I will upload um, for you. It's a, it'll be a PDF file that you can look at to see one way uh, I will. I have arranged those lessons according to lesson blocks. But for now, we're just going to look at the lessons. And these lessons are derived from the images or characters or imaginations from the stories we hear in second grade. And those are the stories uh, of fables from Aesop's collection and the uh, good person stories, um, saint stories. And that's why it's a good balance in second grade. So what we do is we take those imaginations or sometimes just the characters as we're going to do in this first story and we use them to create the lesson. By doing that, the child feels a little more connected to what we're doing because it's, it's set in the context of the story that they have heard. Here I have a little bag, uh, it has a little drawstring. I bought it at a craft store. Uh, it could just as easily have made one. I don't know about just as easily, but I could have made a little bag if I needed to. Um, you could use a cup for this. But the reason I'm using a bag is eventually, because I'm gonna put 10 in a bag, as you'll see in this lesson, eventually I'm gonna be able to put 10 little bags into a larger bag. That will show us the hundreds. So that's why I'm using a little bag. But whatever you use for this lesson, it doesn't have to be a bag. It could be a cup, like I said, a little cup or something. You want to have something else that could hold 10 of those. So eventually we get to where there are 10 in each little thing, and then there'd be 100 in the bigger thing. That's, that's where our lesson is going eventually, not this first lesson. This first lesson is quite simple. It's just introducing a concept. Here we go. We heard the story of Bat and Weasel. In that story, we know that Bat and Weasel met twice. In between their meetings, Weasel was busy doing other things. And while Weasel might sometimes get a little bit confused by, is this a mouse or is this a bird? Yeah. As we heard in the story, what we know is that Weasel is actually pretty good with numbers. And so Weasel was often collecting things. In some cases, he would collect acorns. And in other cases, he would collect beautiful stones. And sometimes he would just collect little berries. He was always collecting things. And when he collected things, let's say in this case, uh, he was collecting just what we have here. He was collecting beads he could put a certain number of beads into a little bag. Let's see how many beads we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten beads. Well, what if we counted them by twos? Two, four, six, eight. 10, yes. Can we count 10 in another way? Of course we can. We can count it in fives. Five, 10. 
We can arrange five in lots of ways. Sometimes it's nice to see five like this. It's very obviously five. Five, ten. Regardless, over and over, however we count them, and I do this to practice counting in different ways, we have ten of these little glass beads. And so, Weasel would put these ten beads into a bag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Always ten. Always ten. And then he would close the bag up. So, sometimes Weasel would collect so many, he would have lots of bags. And this was helpful to have them in the bags, because there were always ten, whatever he was collecting, in this case, beads. There are ten beads in each bag. And so, Weasel could even write this, and I'm going to write this first part with a big block crayon. I'm using the red violet block crayon. And he would just say, I have one bag and he could draw the bag like this. Show the top of it and even have the string very much like ours. And he knew this was one bag. He knew also that inside that bag there were ten little glass beads. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And of course, you could have drawn the beads with different colors, that, that's fine either way. So we have one bag. We have one bag. And so now we see how, it's, how easy it is to rewrite this number as, well, let's do it with a pencil. We see how easy it is to write this number as the number 10. That's why we call this 10, because there are 10 in the bag. This is one bag of 10. One, one bag for 10. So, now we can write what we've learned here. And as simple as that is, and I know it's not, there's not a lot of number work and not a lot of activity here. This is a very important lesson. How much they write, not important, okay? Let's be clear about that. If all they can manage to write is this first sentence, okay. I just want to make sure they know that this one bag, and any time we get the bag full, there are 10 in the bag. No more, no less. That is the key to this lesson.
this is it. But that's lesson one, just setting the stage for our future work. We're going to do some more with this uh, 10 base system, these bags that create these zeros in the, uh, well, you could say it creates the zeros, or you could also say it creates the tens column in our number writing. But right now, the most important thing that they understand is that one bag full, with no more or less, the bag is full. Okay, that's lesson one. I'll see you in lesson two. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. You can see now how the math lesson is derived from the story. We use the imaginations to build the lesson so that the child, the student, is more invested, more connected to what we're actually doing. Math does not have to be cold and abstract. It can be part of a living experience. I hope you'll also look in the description below for the other companion lesson, the language arts lesson, where once again, we pull that lesson out of the story. Please visit our website at simplywaldorf.com where we provide you with additional resources to help simplify your Waldorf homeschooling experience.